بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله because we live in a time where there's so much fitna and confusion and it seems unfortunately there are some people who seek a little bit of knowledge and they become more confused and they become a source of confusion for others and this is one of the biggest trials and tribulations that we are facing within the ranks of Ahlul Sunnah and as many of our scholars have written and extensively detailed this issue it shows there's a great danger of the people moving away from the statements of the major scholars and in this time in our more previous time or in contemporary times we have great imams who spoke about these issues about taking people off the sunnah with ease and being quick to make tabdir similar to the way the takfiris make takfir and following all these manahij which differ from the usul of ahl sunnati wal jama'a and from those imams who spoke about this imams like imam al albani imam muqbil bin hadi al wadi imam bin baz Imam bin Uthaymeen. We yakfina hadha. And that right there is sufficient from our living ones. Imam Fozan and Imam Abdul Mahsan al Abad. How many of our ulama, Imam uh, uh, Sheikh Sari Suhaimi, wa kathir wa kathir. We have so many ulama who've tried to deal with the mashakal. And some of them, they dealt with it even bef before they died, but yet it returned. But people ignore their statements and claim they're Salafi and claim they're following the major scholars and claim and claim and claim. And as we mentioned prior to this, al ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat. The the reality of something is uh, in its substance, not in its name. So someone can claim they're from Ahl Sunnah and be a Hizbi. Someone can claim they're Salafi and in fact be a Hizbi, be an extremist person who makes tabdi of everyone, their own mother, for example, even, their own father, their grandmother, their whatever, with, with quickness. As, as we drink water and tea, they make tabdi. So we have to look at some of these messiahs. So I want to take this time as quickly as possible, as I always say, to look at this messiah and break it down because it is so much fitna when we have youth speaking with little knowledge and blind following other people's statements to take people who are known for the sunnah off the sunnah. So first let's establish this per this important usul from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah from the Salaf al-Salih which is not sitting and making hajr of Ahl al-Bid'ah and then we'll talk about more in depth about what that means for us in our contemporary times with dealing with the people of innovation. Are the people of innovation on the same level? The the people, the, the Salaf we're making Hajar, are they like uh, the people that we deal with, some of the people we deal with today? So we have to look at these Messiah. And if you have the time, listen and do so. Let's listen, let's establish this uh, Asul, which is from the Sul of the Salaf as -Sale. Let's look at the statement of Imam Abawi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Qal, he said, Naqlan, Ijma'a Salaf, ala ma'adat ahl al-bid'ah wa muhajiratihim qal wa qad madat as-sahaba wa tabi'un wa itba'ahum wa ulama sunan ala hadha mujmi'in mutafiqin ala ma'adat ahl al-bid'ah wa muhajiratihim Imam al-Baghwi rahimahullah ta'ala sahib al-sunnah and also Tafsir al-Baghwi and other great works that that great Imam left, he said that it, there was an ijma of Ahl sunnah ijma of the Salaf, that they were united, they had consensus over the issue of having enmity towards Ahl bidah and making hajr of them, meaning to not give them salams, not sit with them in the other ahkam. And he said, and the Sahaba and the Tabi'un, uh, the Tabi'een and the Itba'a Tabi'een, the, the followers of the Tabi'een and the scholars of the Sunnah uh, were all in agreement with having enmity towards the people of innovation. Why? Because they were innovating in the religion of Allah. They were changing 
And as Imam, uh, I believe it was Imam Shafi, he said, or it was Imam Malik who said, whoever, uh, you know, innovates, it's as if he said, uh, uh, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, قَدْ خَانَ رِسَالَةً As if they're saying that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was deceptive in giving the message because they are almost, they're implicitly asserting by practicing their bid'ah and spreading their bid'ah that what they know is better than what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with or that it is, uh, that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't sufficient in what he said my new form of ibadah, my new way of a minhaj, my new methodology is better. This is the implicit, what's impl implied there. وَقَدْ كَانَ السَّلَفْ فِي مُوَافِقِهِمْ مِنْ أَهْلَ الْبِدَعِ يَنْهُونَ عَنِ الْمَجَالَسَةِ أَهْلَ الْبِدَعِ وَمُصَاحِبَتِهِمْ وَيَحْذُرُونَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ أَشَدَّ تَحْذِيرَ كَمَا كَانُوا لَا يَرُونَ السِّمَاعِ بِدَعِهِمْ the Salaf, they were in agreement in prohibiting sitting with the people of innovation and desires, being companions to them, and in warning against them with a very stern warning. And they did not view it as something permissible to listen to the people, uh, to listen to the bid'ah of those people nor to even debate them in anything. Now, it's very important. We're establishing that asul, and you have to understand, for those people who study, now I'm talking about the difference between the talib al-ilm and the person who's just a follower and getting translated things, that you have to understand there's so many details with these masail. We're giving you some important asul, because this is the asul, this is the foundation that the salaf had ijma'an. And do we just say khalas intahayna? La, because we'll find that the salaf, how they practice that, and how we are to practice and apply throughout history uh, that there are many uh, exceptions and details on how to practice those usul. And this is where the people of knowledge differ with the people who lack knowledge. And this is where our ulama differ with their path and their minhaj and their methodology, the methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, from a lot of the people who for whatever reason, maybe they're Hizbi. You know what I mean? Maybe they have another group partisanship. They have blind following to their sheikh or to two sheikhs or three sheikhs or to a, a, a new minhaj or a new methodology or a new group. So they can't, they can't hear that. They can't store that in their brain and in their heart and in their practice, but rather they have to stick with one position and believe that they're applying it properly when in fact these things have a lot of details. Listen to some of the athar of the Salaf, and there is countless books. If we go to Al Alakai's uh, Asul Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, which is somewhere around here, five, six volumes of Aqwal of the Salaf about these issues. Um, a Sunnah uh, Al Alakai, a Sunnah Lil Khalal. We have Kathir, Kathir books of the Salaf, which uh, affirm for us this. Uh, uh, the madhab of the salaf in dealing with ahl bid'ah. Here's one narration. فَعَنْ أَبِي قُلَابَ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَنَّهُ كَانَ يَقُوُ لَا تُجَالَسُوا أَهْلَ الْأَهْوَىٰ وَلَا تُجَادِلُوهُمْ فَإِنِّي لَا آمِنْ أَنْ يَغْمَسُوكُمْ فِي ضَلَالِ أَوْ يَلْبِسُوا عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ يُلَبِّسُوا عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ بَعَدَ مَا لُبِسَ عَلَيْهِمْ uh, uh, Abi Qulaba uh, said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, do not sit with the people of desires and do not debate with them because I cannot guarantee that you will not be uh, encompassed and drowned uh, in, their, uh, in their, uh, their misguidance or that you will be deceived by them in your religion you know, in Islam, in, in the deen. Uh, after, and some, or, or in, in some ways, uh, that you will be deceived in, in other ways, meaning that you'll be partially deceived, either totally deceived in your religion, for example, 
being from Ahlus Sunnah and then going to be from being an Ashari or some extreme Sufi, as we've seen some people do, or or an extreme Takfiri or what have you, or that you will change in some issues. And this comes from sitting with Ahl Bid'ah. Wa an Hassan al Basri, Rahimullah Ta'ala, and who call La to Jalas who Ahl al Ahwa, Wala to Jadiluhum, Wala Tesma U Minhum. Hassan al Basri, Rahimullah Ta'ala, said, do not sit with the people of desires. Do not debate with them. And do not listen to them. And there's so many. Uh, a last statement. Imam, uh, Imam Ahmed قال, وقال Imam Ahmed, أصول السنة عندنا تمسك بما كان عليه أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم والاقتداء بهم وترك البدع وكل بدعة فهي ضلالة وترك الخصومات والجلوس مع أصحاب الأحواء وترك المراء وجدال وخصومات في الدين إمام أحمد one of the four great imams from the فقهاء الأربعة he said رحمة الله عليه رحمة واسعة he said and the أصول السنة the foundation of the سنة to us is to adhere to what the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم were upon and adhere to it and leave off innovation and every innovation it is misguidance and leave off debating and arguing and sitting with the people of desires and leave off uh, you know leave off debating and uh, debating in the religion. So, Habitifillah, we see that that important foundation has been established by our, our Salaf al Saleh to not sit with Ahl Bida. But again, now we need to get into some details relevant to our situation. قال المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى أو حفظ الله تعالى قال وكما كان السلف يسلكون مع الأهل البدع أسلوب الحجر وتأديب الذي تقدم بعد صوره فإنهم لا يهملون في المقابل أسلوب التأليف وترغيب بل يسلكون في دعوتهم لأهل البدع وغيرهم من العصاة ما يرون أنه مناسب لحالهم وأنجع في هدايتهم وإرشادهم من أسلوب الهجر وتأليف is very important so then our Sheikh حفظ الله تعالى he mentioned Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili حفظ الله تعالى he mentioned and similar to how the Salaf used to traverse uh, this way with the people of desires which had to do with the aslu the 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 manners of or uh, or practicing hajr you know by not giving salams not sitting with them what ta'deeb you know to 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 correct them and to teach them through correction that has already been mentioned in in various uh ways and as we mentioned some of those athar of the salaf that the Salaf, you know, were vigilant in refuting bid'ah and uh, and not and those different ahkam regarding ahl bid'ah by not sitting with them, by making hajr of them, not giving them salams, not listening to them, all of those other uh, uh, ahkam and those masail, those detailed masail with regards to the the overall uh, masala. And so then he says that the the Salaf they did not stop there that uh, with uh, in in addition to those ahkam meaning the you know cutting off ahl bid'ah and so forth that they also use the way to uh, of uh, you know showing ahl bid'ah through other means dealing with them with other means and and giving them dawah giving the dawah to ahl bid'ah 
and other than them from the people who were major sinners. And they would look to see what was the most useful way uh, in, according, in accordance with their how, in accordance with their, st their status or their, their, their condition. And that which would bring the most guidance for them, meaning guidance for Ahl al and to guide them uh, from the various ways of either making hajr or, uh, or doing those things which would open their heart. So what this statement indicates for us is that the Salaf did not, they had their usul, and from that usul, they dealt with people differently in accordance with their how, in accordance with their condition. For example, some examples are, for example, the Ahkam of the Khawarij and the Ahkam of the Jahmiya and uh, Mu'tazila and other groups. That Ahl Sunnah, they were united, you know, there's Nakla Ijma of the Salaf that they made takfir of the Jahmiya. Okay, those people who make ta'til completely of the uh, sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, that these people, they negated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a rahman he is, he is a rahman in his name, but he, is, he doesn't have rahmah. Okay, because that's making it like the creation. This is the, the concept, this is how the Jahmiya and some of those other groups of Ahl Kalam, this is some of their etiqad. So Ahl Sunnah, they made takfir of them. Whereas the Khawarij, who were great danger, that they, they didn't make, the Salaf in general did not make takfir of the Khawarij. Some of the latter scholars in general may have, but the, the Sahaba, generally, they did not make takfir of the Khawarij, as was mentioned to Ali ibn Abi Talib when he was uh, going to uh, fight with the Khawarij. And they asked, you know, Amir al-Mu'mineen, uh, you know, basically, are they disbelievers? He said, no, but rather they are a people who have rebelled against us. And so we're fighting them for their rebellion. And, you know, and of course, their, their bid'ah and their itaqad, their issues of itaqad. But they are, he considered them like, uh, like uh, rebels, but it wasn't fighting. They were not apostates. So it shows us what? It shows us that ahla bid'ah tafawit wa ahla sunnah tafawit. It shows us that Ahl al-Bid'ah has different levels of deviance and Ahl al-Sunnah has different levels of adherence to the Sunnah, meaning you can't compare someone who's just from the general Muslims, who's, who's Salafi, but they don't have knowledge. They're not adhering to the menhaj of the Salaf necessarily based upon knowledge. They're just going more so on taqlid. Yes, they believe in some in the issues of itaqad based on the evidence that it, they've come across or what have you, but they're not like the student of knowledge, for example, a strong student of knowledge. And that one is not like the scholar, and the scholar is not like the alam. So then they have different levels. They have different levels of their adherence to the sunnah. You know, there could be some students of knowledge and some sheikhs or whatever that have certain sins that they do. So that means that's a nux in their, their adherence to the sunnah. But that does not make them off the sunnah, and that means that you deal with everyone in accordance with their status. And that's the point we want to make, is that Ahl al-Bid'ah has different levels in their closeness to the Sunnah and their bird on a Sunnah. So some of Ahl al-Bid'ah are very far from Ahl al-Sunnah in their usul. For example, those groups like the Mu'tazila and Jahmiya and so forth. But the Ashari's, the Ashaira, they are one, as many of the scholars have mentioned, and we're not talking about the extreme Ashadis that have combined Sufism and other deviant practice, but in general, as far as Aqidah and a lot of uh, practices with the Sharia, the Ashadis are Aqrab Ilayna. They are closer to Ahl Sunnah, but still being outside of Ahl Sunnah. So I think that's very important for us to understand because some people believe Ashadis are from Ahl Sunnah or that they're Salafi. No, they're not. But rather, they are Aqrab. They're closer to the sunnah. So that means you're going to deal with someone who's closer to the sunnah, who has deviance in this issue or this issue in a different way. They're going to have one whose whole usul is different. And I hope you understand that because that is my whole point, 
is that when people try to take just some athar of the salaf and leave off other athar and leave off other aqwal, the aqwal and the fahim and the fiqh and the deen that the, the salaf uh, left for us, and they just present their one view, khalas, ah, the bid'ah, khalas, he's jama'at to the bleak, and treat them as if they're disbelievers. This one is a khwani muslimin, he's kind of a khwani, khalas, we don't give him salams, we did, no. You have everything, you have to look at the masari and the mufasid. Everything you have to look at the how, that requires fiqh, it requires ilm, and it requires basira, to know how to deal with those issues in each place, locality, and time. And this is, you see muqarrar in the salaf. You'll see these kind of statements be in pleth, plethora from the books of the salaf and from our contemporary ulama, and we're going to get to that, if you can be patient. Listen to this, this very important statement, which is going to establish this foundation for us right now, because for those who have doubt and, and want to criticize our Sheikh, Sheikh Ibrahim al that's fine. You don't have to take from the Sheikh. But let's go to what Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, where Sheikh Ibrahim got this statement from. Let's listen. Qala Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala qal wa hadhu hajr yakhtalaf bi ikhtalaf al-muhajirin muhajirin fi quwwatihim wa da'fihim wa wa qillatihim wa kathratihim fa inna al-maqsood bihi zajr al-mahjur wa ta'dibihi wa rujoo al-'am an mithli halihi fa in kanat المصلحة في ذلك راجها بحيث يفضي هجره إلى ضعف ضعف الشر وخفيته كان مشروعيا. Listen to this, and then we'll finish the statement. He said, and this hajr. So he's talking about the issue of making hajr of people, not giving them salams, not sitting with them, leaving them. He said that this differs between the different uh, circumstances between the different. People being made hajr of, you know, the one who's making hajr of the other one. He said this differs, and it depends upon the strength of them. It depends on the weakness of them, meaning we have to, you have to look into the weakness of the person making hajr of them, or the, the strength of the person who made hajr of. All these issues have to be taken in consideration, and I'm going to give you some examples so that you can understand. وَكِلَّ تِهِمْ him, And the, 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 uh, the amount of them... Uh, the, the, the little amount of them and the large amount of them, meaning the, is Ahlul Sunnah in a lot of numbers or are they in weak numbers? Is Ahlul Bidah in majority of the numbers or are they in weak numbers? Very important, Ahabit of Allah. Mahjur. Because the intent, again, this is our intention, these are acts of ibadah. When you make hajr of someone, you cut them off, this has to do with your worship. It has to do with you're doing this for the sake of Allah. If you're doing it for your desires, you're doing it for your hizbiyah, you're doing it for your group, you're doing it because so and so said so. You, you're going to get yourself in trouble because then you're leaving away from those issues that are uh, from the religion and you're making it according, you're, 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 you know, as the Prophet ﷺ said, in a bin niyat, verily actions are tied to the intentions. So you'll get that which for what you intended. If you did it to please the people, well, then you did it for your hizbiyah. So you actually called someone a hizbi and you fell into hizbiyah. This is the dangerous thing that we see countless time being practiced with some of the people will Allah understand. So it depends on what the intent of the uh, of the of making the hijr. Is it to reprimand the person the person who's made this mistake or these sins or f fallen into these aspects of bid'ah and to educate them to have an educated effect uh, to order to bring them back to their previous state that they were upon, meaning they, they were on the sunnah, so you want to bring them back. Is that what the hajr is for? That's one of the reasons. He said, and th so if there is, this is the whole important thing, for, so if there is maslah, if there is benefit in this, and meaning the benefit is over, over superseding the mufasid, the, the, the harm of doing it, in, uh, in accordance with uh, making the person who is you're making hajr of that they are uh, it lessens their evil and makes it less then it's mishroor that's very important and I'm going to give you some examples mm -hmm. even before we complete Sheikh uh, Imam uh, Sheikh Islam's statement let's, let's break that statement down so that way we understand it and we digest it properly so he's saying here 
that again it, it, it's a, it's upon the maslaha. It depends if there's benefit. For example, if you have someone, or, or first he mentioned how people's state uh, status differs. Sometimes ahl sunnah is strong, sometimes ahl uh, bid'ah is weak. For example, let's look at America. America is a big continent, okay? The continent of North America is big. You have many Muslims, Muslim communities all over the place, okay? If you look at some of the places where there's Salafia is strong, for example, from my knowledge, I've never been there but Philly, and I've been to New Jersey, I've seen New Jersey in those and certain places. So you have a lot of students of knowledge there, you have a lot of, uh, the Dawah is known, especially in Philly, you hear the stories, and the many brothers I know from Philly, and Imams, I know many of the Du'at that are there on the circuit now, at least I know them from Medina and stuff like this, and you will find, uh, you'll find, so the Dawah is very widespread and known. So that means the Salafis in general probably have a have more strength, more Qawwa there. And Ahl al maybe has less there. But if you come to where I'm from, from Seattle, Washington, the other side of the country, where Ahl al-Sunnah, the Sunnah is widespread. We have a lot in the Seattle area with a lot of graduates. Some of them, they may there may be different Messiah and different issues, but in general, people are calling. There's a lot of uh, the Dawah is being pumped. Okay, but you could definitely say that the understanding of a lot of these issues is very weak there. It's not like a place like Philly where they're in touch with ulama and ulama are doing telelinks and stuff. There they don't do that really. And you have immigrant community and they have a whole different orientation about uh, who scholars are and, and in touch with their scholars and so forth. So the point being a habit of Allah, those mu'amalat, those, those ahkam, the situations differ because Ahl Sunnah might be very weak in a place like that, like Seattle area, for example, or some other place, Portland, Oregon, or some small town somewhere where there are Muslims, but there are only a few, uh, uh, you know, not that many Salafis, not that many people on, on the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu So depending on the strength of Ahl Sunnah is going to make a difference. If you're just four or five people, and the whole community, you have thousands of Muslims or a million Muslims in that area. But you have like 20 people, this is a, a scenario, 20 people who are adhering to the Sunnah and striving to adhere to the Sunnah. And maybe the rest, they're extreme Sufis and they're on this and on different manahij. Is it really going to do you much benefit? Are you going to have much effect on the masses if you just cut people off and you attack people and all you're doing is refutations and you're doing this and this and this to attack. You're not really showing people the sunnah. You're not inviting them. Of course, the answer is no. And this is the point of having wisdom and fiqh fi deen and knowing, you know, and operating with each condition and, and um, scenario in accordance with how it should be done. And this takes fiqh fi deen. It takes basira. It takes... Uh, insight into the religion to know these principles and know how to practice these principles. Sheikh al Islam, uh, and so, so therefore, another point that he mentioned, Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and it's well known as Mijmu Fatawa, that also, if there is more harm in making Hajar, so in a situation like that, for example, the city I was living in where my mother lives is a city called Bellevue, Bellevue, Washington, okay? Majority of the people, they're very strong Jamaat to the Bleak. Not just Jamaat to the Bleak. They have a very, you know, strong presence there. All the Masajid on that east side, very strong for the most part. Jamaat to the Bleak. They have all the times Jamaat come through. And there's uh, some Tasawwuf. And you'll find that even there is uh, some of the Naqshbandi, I believe, Thur, because you see Hamza Yusuf, his, one of his emissaries I saw there once and others. So you see that they have this orientation. They're very strong. Now, the people there, they know I'm Salafi. And then I think there's some other Salafis in that mas masjid, for example. They know that when they begin to speak, I leave. But you don't hear me making confusion and fitna. The Imam, he has a respect for me and I have a respect for the Imam. He knows even once I asked him about something, about a, a place to study, and he said, you Basically, your orientation, meaning because I'm Salafi, you wouldn't uh, think that was appropriate for your son. Something like this affair. The point being, a habitifillah, is because the weakness 
those Akem, if I was to go in there, make Hajar of the whole community, or most of the community, and treat the people with rough, not give salams, they would think I'm crazy, probably call the police and kick me out of the masjid for good, or whatever the case may be. So the harm would be more than the benefit. And this is what we have to gain an understanding of. So Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned, he said, وَإِن كَانَ لَا لَا الْمَحْجُورِ وَلَا غَيْرُهُ يَرْتَذَى بِذَلِكَ بَلْ يُزِيدَ الشَّرْ وَالْمُحَاجِرْ ضَعِيفِ بِهَيْثِ يَكُونْ مَفْسَدَ ذَلِكَ رَاجِحَ عَلَى مَصْلَحَتِهِ لَمْ يَشْرَى الْحَجِرْ That's exactly what we just said. So Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, so if you have a problem with this, go to Mejmu'ah Fatawa and argue with that. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said that if the person who is being made hajr of, so this is a person from Ahl al-Bidah, you've already established this is a person from Ahl al-Bidah, uh, or whatever, or he's got major sins and you're making hajr of him for whatever the case may be, uh, then if this person, if it's going to increase the evil, and that the one making Hajar is very weak. And that the Mafsada, the harms or the wickedness of it, is greater than the Maslaha, than the benefit of this. Then it is not Mishroor, it is not legislated to make Hajar. That's very important. Some people. They think that, they read those statements of the Salaf, they want to make hajr of every single person who either differs with them, or even people who may be from Ahl al-Bidah. But they don't have any idea about the qawaid and the dawabit, these, these principles and these criterion for these issues that looking at the maslaha and the mafsada. And the short of it all is looking at, is there a greater harm by doing this or a greater benefit? That is the asl of this. And I asked seven of the Mashaikh before I left Medina many years ago about this issue. Some of the Mashaikh I asked Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili, Sheikh Suleiman Rahili, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab al Aqil in Hail, Sheikh Saeed bin Halal. I asked Sheikh uh, Abdullah Obeylan in Medina. Who else did I ask? I wanted to ask Sheikh, Sheikh Obey, but I recall he was sick and he didn't have time for questions. Um, and other Mashaikh, anyway, I remember call it was about seven Mashaikh, and I recorded it. And I asked them this question, what about giving uh, da'wah in the Masajid of Ahl al-Bidah? Can, can we do that? You know, if it's an established Masajid of Ahl al-Bidah. All of them, all seven of those scholars that I mentioned, they all said, which goes in accordance with what Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah says and what the strongest adilla is, that there's details with it. They said that these issues, and this is in short what they said, you know, all they all said basically the same thing that depends on the benefits and the harms. You know, and that, you know, Sheikh Salman al Rahili, one of the things he mentioned, he mentioned that that if he said, you know, you're going to a locality and it's from Ahl Bidah, and you're going to give a lecture. For example, in this masjid, which is no, maybe it's a tabliki masjid, whatever the case may be, there are khwani, most of the people in the community, or whatever the case may be, and he said, you should establish with your local Salafi brothers, tell them what you're doing. So that way they don't have in their hearts, you know, they, they don't become, uh, har you know, think that you're from Ahl al or you're helping Ahl al or whatever the case may be. Now, I want to be real, be honest with this mas'ala, that you will find, and from some of those mashayikh in our contemporary times, who say do not, who are totally against this, Sheikh Rabi bin, uh, bin Hadi al Medkhali, Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi, Sheikh uh, uh, Ubaid, I, I would imagine Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari, but I, you know, I've never. You know, I see in general from what he says, but I know those other ones are very strong. They have a very strong position about not doing it, not going and giving dawah to those places. And that's an acceptable uh, view. It's an acceptable view, which goes in general in accordance with the, uh, with the aqwal of the salaf, as we mentioned. However, what's important is those details. And what's very interesting and fascinating, and we taught it on here, you can find it on my YouTube page, 
I went over Sheikh Rabiz, he, he was in Sudan, okay? And it's translated into English, his experience. And he did dawah, and he did dawah in the Sufi Masajid. And he called them, and the people loved him, and their people were accepting of him. So this is Sheikh Rabiz, and I want you to check it for yourself. So I want to end and keep this brief by saying, uh, ending with some of the statements of the major scholars in this time that are well-respected Salafi scholars, revivers of the Sunnah, they've been known as some of them, like Imam al-Albani and others, and Bin Baz, and some of their statements about taking people off the Sunnah. Because the whole reason that I, I did this was to talk about, as I get so many comments about people making comments about Tahir and uh, Muhammad Munir, and saying that I'm helping Ahl Bid'ah, or that I'm deceiving the youth, or that, you know, the scholars have spoken. But these are not substantial claims that these people are saying. And in fact, these people, those two brothers in particular, were known, and are known for spreading the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as I said prior to this. But let's, let's just say for the sake of argument that they made a mistake because they're in masjids which are not Salafi or not considered Salafi by the people, or whatever the case may be. Let's say they made a mistake. Let's look at what the great Imams of the Sunnah of this time said about these Masail, instead of our desires, and instead of, instead of people who have less knowledge than these great Imams who were revivers of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this time. Imam al-Albani, Rahdullah said, you're, you're making obligatory for someone to take up your opinion while he is not convinced of it, negates a principle from among the principles of the Dao to Salafia. That goes against the Dao to Salafia if you force people to take their principle. But then people will say this is Ali Halabi's uh, uh, principle and they'll say you're copying that and you're a Mubtari because of this. But listen to what Imam al-Albani, so why don't you make Tabdi of Imam al-Albani since you got a problem with this about forcing people. He says, which is that judgment is for Allah alone. Due to this, it is enough for you that the both of you remain on his opinion, so long as neither one of you is convinced of the opinion of the other, and that you do not deem him misguided, just as he does not deem you misguided, and with this it is possible for you to remain in cooperating with him, and that which you both agree on regarding the principles of the Dawa and its branches. So it lets us know that you're not always going to agree. Every scholar from Ahl Sunnah does not agree on every uh, issue that comes up and every person they don't all agree one sheikh may say so and so is thikah that he's trustworthy another sheikh says no I don't trust him I believe he's a liar or I need verification that what he's saying is true so you're they're not going to agree of course and that's going to look at what's going on now with some of the mashayikh and the 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 fueling from the students as usual of fueling the fire between different Mashaikh that are known for serving the Sunnah for 20, 30, 40 years. And this will continue on if we don't gain these, 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 uh, the strength of ilm and how to deal with this fitna. Imam, Imam al-Albani said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, as for what I hear now from this question concerning how a Muslim is removed from the Jama'ah or the Jama'ah Salafiya because he made a mistake in an issue or other, then I do not see that this can be anything but an infection from the other partisan parties. This is from the Hizbis saying this. This removal of the Salafi from Salafia due to a mistake he made is from the practice of some of the Islamic parties which do not take up the Salafi minhaj as a minhaj and fiqh or understanding of Islam. Rather, this practice is that of a Hizb. SubhanAllah, that is a powerful statement by Imam al-Albani. Uh, and it's in his Fatawa of Jiddah that the Imam was letting us know that this is from Hizbiya, that every time a Salafi scholar or, or Talib al-Ilm or Du'at makes a mistake, that you rush to take him off the Sunnah because the Salaf weren't like that. And as we mentioned prior countless times and how many books of the great Imams wrote about the mistakes and how many statements of the great Imams <laughs> stating that if we were to hold everyone accountable for their mistakes when everyone, no one is infallible except the Prophet wasallam, then there would be no one to take knowledge from. This is from the Salaf. How many of the Salaf made mistakes on sometimes big issues? This happened from time to time. This happened from Imams uh, Ahl Hadith that we don't make tabdi of them. 
So why is it when a brother makes a, a simple mistake and he's, his usul is Ahl Sunnah, we're not talking about someone whose usul is that of Ahl Bid'ah in many areas that they're differing with the Sunnah, we're talking about people whose usul, their foundation is Ahl Sunnah. Why is it that we don't have mercy for them? Why is it that we, not try to, we don't try to correct them? Why do, is it that we don't give them time even to correct their mistake? If it's not done immediately after you post it on their, in your comment or you, you, whatever the case may be, you made an outward refutation of them and they don't even see your refutation as being substantial, but yet they didn't, they didn't comply to your desires, so they're, they're off it now. They're from Ahl Bidat. This is a dangerous method, a dangerous minhaj, which has become uh, a minhaj contemporary. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, uh, uh, oh, uh, Imam al Albani also said, Shaykh al-Islam is one of the greatest I have seen from the ulama that has justice. He says, this is the ijtihad for which they will be rewarded. Whereas, if an error was to arise from some of the students of knowledge of our time based on ijtihad, they will say, this one is misguided, this one is an innovator, and will defame and slander him. Look, at we see this happen all the time. So this is what uh, Imam al Albani said regarding the uh, aqwal of Sheikh al-Islam, uh, or this is what Imam, uh, this is the statement of um, Bin Uthaymeen. Imam Fozan said, Allah has not burdened you with tabdi of the people, and to judge them as being innovators. Allah has not burdened you with this. Seek knowledge now. If you seek knowledge, you will know the innovation and the innovator. As for you setting loose your tongue on everyone who opposes you, and everyone who does something you criticize him and say he is an innovator, the return, the returns to you as a sin, oh, this returns to you as a sin. What is obligatory is that the person holds his tongue from these issues, seeks knowledge, and busies himself with seeking knowledge. Imam Abdul Masin al Abad said, half of Allah Ta'ala, they do not know anything about the deen, and they are present in Europe and in the East, and in the West. They do not know anything from the deen. However, they've been afflicted with tibdi and boycotting. So, so-and-so has made tibdi of so-and-so. So whoever does not make tibdi of him is also a mubtadia, and to be boycotted. This is not the way of the salaf. Sheikh bin Baz did not do this whatsoever. How plentiful his refutations were. But he was occupied with knowledge, and he did not follow up those who responded to him. Rather, he clarified the truth and continued in the path of knowledge. This is the correct way. As for what small students of knowledge do, who are found in different places and have no knowledge, and rather brand their brothers by saying, so-and-so is an innovator. So if you do not make tibdi of him, then we make tibdi of you. While, that, while the person they intend is from Ahl Sunnah, again, as we mentioned, and these words are in regards to Ahlul Sunnah, and something is arrived from them, which could be correct or otherwise. However, this practice, it is not permissible. It is not known from the Salaf of this Ummah, that if one of them erred, that he would be boycotted and made tibdi of, and that it is sought from the people to also make tibdi of him, or to boycott him. This is not the minhaj of the Salaf. This is what our Imam Abdul Masin al-Abad al-Muhaddith uh, as Imam Muqbil said about him, Muhaddith Jazirat al-Arab, as, as, as was mentioned, related to me from one of the Tulab al-Ilm in Yemen. Listen to this last statement of Sheikh Falah Ismail, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, one of our Mashaykh in Kuwait, one of the senior scholars in Kuwait. He said, those who have this shidda, this you know, sternness, severity, you see, with, you see them with the kuffar the fusak, the, the, the wicked sinners, and grave worship, worship, worshipers, so soft and meek, they're so soft with them. By, by Allah, if he goes to a sinner, rather to kuffar, ahl bidah and grave worshipers, mashallah, what is this softness, kindness, and compassion here? Meaning that they are, some of the people are so extreme with their brothers who have the same usul, maybe because of jealousy, maybe because of hezbiyah, maybe because we don't know all the various reasons and what's in the people's hearts. But they're so stern with their brothers for something they disagree with, and but yet they're so nice to the people of clear innovation and the people who aren't even Muslim and so forth. But yet those people who are closest to them, who are in the same methodology, the same ulama, but they differ in an issue. 
they cut them off. And I'm going to relate this last, as I mentioned this prior to this, a brother I've known for 20 years, we went to Demag together. We went to Demag in the same vehicle. Over WhatsApp, he cut me off over the issue of Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili. And another issue, which I didn't even know about, because I didn't even know who Abu Taymiyyah, may Allah preserve him, and the other brother, uh, Abdurrahman Hassan, he sent me a clip. And all I said is, you should be just. The people should be just. All I read some of the comments. I listened to some of the brothers' debate. You know, I don't know who he is because I didn't know. I'd only seen some of his, his, his picture on some of the videos. I don't really listen to the English speakers like that. I haven't in 20 years, so I don't know who's doing what and who's out there necessarily. But he cut me off just because I said be just. And I said our Asal is gentle. And if the brother made a mistake in this, if the brother made a mistake, then call, just give him da'wah. Khas, his usul is ahl sunnah. What's the big deal? He made a mistake. Correct him. Keep it pushing. If he accepts the correction, alhamdulillah. If not, if he, if he sees that there's another, he sees that there's some issue in that, okay, give time. And it's one issue. It's not like a, a menhaj or something. So this particular brother, may Allah guide us in him, he cut me off over this. And he was very wrong in some, of, in some of those Messiah and me. I always considered him as a, my senior because he stayed in Damaj for years. I'm not going to mention his name, but he stayed in Damaj for years. But it shows the Fiqh Fidin doesn't mean, it's not about a place and a locality, but it's about what you acquired. It's about what you acquired in the knowledge. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all success. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Anything I said that was correct. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect. So myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad.